Hello Mathies, welcome to this video for 2.3, but before I begin with 2.3, let's review 2.2. So in this example here, we have some point on a terminal arm of an angle, and it has coordinates of 12 and k, and that point is 13 units from the origin. So we want to find the value of k, the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent, and the value of the angle in degrees. So let's start first of all by sketching it. So x has a coordinate of 12, meaning it's positive. So it's 12 and k units. It's 13 units away. So the distance from the point to the origin is 13. So let's drop down a perpendicular line segment here and solve for k. Now you can solve for k by using Pythagorean theorem or maybe recognize it's a Pythagorean triplet. 12, 5, and 13 is a Pythagorean triplet. So I know that k is 5. But that's not the only value that k can be. So x can be positive in quadrant number 1, but it can also be positive in quadrant number 4, meaning there's another value of k, which is negative 5. So this angle could be in quadrant number 1 or in quadrant number 4. Let's look at each one. So in quadrant number 1, here's what my triangle looks like, and sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent would be opposite over adjacent. Now to solve for my angle, because this is in quadrant 1, I could use sine, cosine, or tangent because they are all positive. So looking at either one of those on my calculators, the sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse is all the same angle. Because in quadrant number 1, my angle and my reference angle are the same. So one possible measurement for the angle is just 23 degrees. Now this angle could also be drawn in quadrant number 4. So in this case here, sine opposite over hypotenuse would be negative 5 over 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now in this quadrant here, cosine is the only one that's positive. So that's what I'm going to use on my calculator. I'm going to do the cos inverse of cosine, which is my reference angle again of 22.6. In quadrant 4, to figure out what my angle is, I'm going to do 360 minus my reference angle, meaning that the angle could also be 337 degrees. So two possible answers. I could have that theta is 23 degrees or 337 degrees. Let me try that again. And that would be my answer. Okay, in this lesson here we're going to look at the sine law, which is a way to solve for missing sides and angles in a triangle. Now before I get into telling you what a sine law is, let's develop it by doing an example. So in this example here, I have this triangle, three angles given and one side. I want to find side SC. So I run into a problem because none of the things that I've used so far are going to help me. I can't use Pythagorean theorem or Sokotoa because I don't have a 90 degree angle. I don't have a 90 degree triangle. So what I'm going to do is create a 90 degree angle triangle to help me solve for SC by dropping down an altitude. So if I drop down an altitude there, I can solve for side SC by finding out what side X is and side Y is and then just adding the two together. So let's start with figuring out what Y is. So looking at this here, I have an angle of 30 degrees, I have an adjacent and I have a hypotenuse, which is cosine. So writing that out, I have that cosine of 30 degrees is adjacent y over hypotenuse 75. Multiply both sides by 75, and I get that y is equal to 75 times cos of 30. So I can plug that into my calculator, and I get that y is equal to 64.95. So let's record that and then we're going to try and work towards x. So now that we have that we want to solve for side x. Now looking at the other triangle there's not enough information for me to find x in one step but what I could do is solve for this side right here. 
So because I have this triangle and I have two sides out of three in a triangle, I can use Pythagorean theorem, which would be 75 squared minus 64.95 squared, and that would just give me b squared, which then I'd take the square root to get the height of the triangle. So putting that into my calculator, just like that, I get that my height is 37.5. Okay, so I have that side and I have the height. Now let's look at this side of the triangle here and find side x. I have an angle, I have an opposite side, and an adjacent, that's tangent. So tangent of 50 degrees is equal to opposite 37.5 over adjacent, which is x. So I can just set a proportion here and cross multiply and divide. So if I do 1 times 37.5 divide by 10 of 50, and that would give me side x. So I can put that into my calculator, and there I get side x. Well, now that I have x and I have y, I can add the two together to get what side sc is. And there I have solved sc. So I can solve it even though it's not a right triangle. It just took me a few steps to get there. Now let's look at that triangle from the very beginning with side sc labeled. Let's see if there's an easier way of coming up with what this solution here is by looking at the ratios of the sides and the angles. So I want to look at the ratio of the sine of the angles and their opposite sides. So if I take, for example, sine of 100, there we are, sine of 100, and compare it to this, or sine of 50 and compare it to this. If I were to compare those ratios, what would I see? So plugging those into my calculator, you can see if I did sine of 100 over its opposite side, I get this number. If I did sine of 50 over its opposite side, I get this number. Now those numbers themselves don't necessarily mean anything, but they do match. And because they match, that means that the ratios are equal. Even if I were to flip them around and did the sides on top and sine of the angle on bottom, you can see they are still equal. So what we've done is we've shown that the ratio of opposite sides and the sine of their angles will always be equal in the same triangle. Now we can use that to do sine law. So this is what sine law is. It's a formula relating sides and their opposite angles of a triangle, and it will allow you to solve for a missing side or a missing angle. I'll show you an example of each. So anytime I have opposite pairs, sine of A over A, sine of B over B, sine of C over C, etc., those are all going to be equal within the same triangle, whether it's the angles on top or the sides on top. But the big trick here is that if you want to solve for angles, you put the angles on top. If you want to solve for the sides, you put the sides on top. Here's two different cases that you can use to solve sine law. First thing is, you have to have opposite pairs. So in one case, I have two sides and an angle, and I'm solving for an opposite angle. But again, you can see I have opposite pairs here, and this is the unknown I'm solving for, but I have the opposite side. Here, I have opposite pairs, and you can see I'm solving for this missing side, but I have the opposite angle. So sine law will only work if you have opposite pairs. You can't use sine law if you don't have opposite pairs. So let's try an example. In this one here, I want to solve for the missing side. So first thing is I want to check, do I have opposite pairs? So I have an angle and the side. I have a side, ah, but I don't have the angle. So it looks like I might not be able to use sine law. However, I do have two angles, and I know if I have two angles, I can find the third angle by using angle sum. So angle sum is when 180 subtract the two angles I already have, and then I can figure out that this angle here is 81, and now I have opposite pairs. So because I'm solving for a missing side, I'm going to put my side on top. So when I set up my proportion, I'm going to put my side, my unknown side on top, which is A. So I start with A here over its opposite sine of 53. 
is equal to 36 over its opposite sine of 81. And then all I do is I cross multiply and divide, putting it into my calculator to get my missing side. So then I know that my missing side, I'll write that out, 29.1, and then I'll add on centimeters as my units. Let's try an example where I'm finding the missing angle. So for example here, first thing again I want to check is do I have opposite pairs? So I have an angle and a side, an angle and a side. So I do in fact have opposite pairs. So what I'm going to do is set it up with the angle on top this time. So I'm going to have sine of angle x over its opposite side 12 is equal to sine of 112 over its opposite side 25. So setting it up, I'm going to cross multiply and divide. Remembering when I do that, I'm not going to get what x is, I'm going to get what sine x is. So cross multiply and divide to figure out what sine x is. And then you can see in my last step, I do sine inverse of the answer. So then I know that x is equal to 26 degrees. Sometimes in word problems involving sine law, we use angle of elevation and angle of depression. So angle of elevation, just like it sounds. Elevation, elevating going up, it's an angle above. Angle of depression, depressed means going down, it's below the horizon. Now whether the question gives you an angle of elevation or an angle of depression, they are the same. So an angle of depression and an angle of, de of elevation are the same between two objects. But I always want you to use the angle of elevation because this one is inside the triangle. So let's always use an angle of elevation. Okay, in this example here, we have the Calgary Tower located downtown Calgary. There's one intersection where to the left, if I were to look up at the tower, it would have an angle of elevation of 5.9, and another intersection to the right, where if I were to look up, it would have an angle of elevation of 10.3. Now these two intersections are 2.9 kilometers apart. We're going to use that to solve to the nearest meter the height of the Calgary Tower. So let's draw a little diagram of what that looks like. So here's my tower, here's my two intersections and their angle of elevation, and the distance between those two intersections. So we're going to use this information with sine law to find the height of the Calgary Tower. Okay, so looking at this one here, I have this triangle here. I'm going to start, first of all, by finding the angle in the middle using angle sum of a triangle. So I know that all the angles add up to 180, so 180, subtract those two, and the angle at the apex of the triangle will be 163.8 degrees. Okay, now we're trying to find the height of the triangle. Before I can do that, I need to find a side of the triangle first. So this is where sine law can come in. So I have this side with an opposite angle. I have this side with an opposite angle. I have sine opposite pairs, so I can use sine law. So start with my side over sine of the opposite angle equals to 2.9 over the sine of its opposite angle. And then I can cross, multiply, and divide to figure out what that side length x is. So putting that into my calculator, I get that x is equal to 1.07. Of course, I'm not going to round that. I'm going to keep that in my calculator and I'll label my triangle with all of it. Okay, now again, we're trying to find the height of the triangle. So what I can now do is look at my triangle here. I've got angle, opposite, and hypotenuse. That's sine. So sine of 10.3 is equal to opposite, which is my height, over hypotenuse, 1.068. 486953. And then I'll just put that over 1 and I will cross multiply and divide. So sine of 10.3 multiplied by 1.068, etc. And that should give me the height of the Calgary Tower. So that is, of course, in kilometers. 
but we wanted to know what that answer was to the nearest meter. So I'll just times that by a thousand and I get that the height of the Calgary Tower is 191 meters tall. So using sine law and sine ratio of a right triangle helps us solve that. So again, that kind of begs the question, is that actually the height of the Calgary Tower? And fun fact, it is in fact the height of the Calgary Tower. So hope this video introductory video to sign law helped. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we talk about the ambiguous case.